Dear students, a uh, very good morning to all, and uh, I hope that you are fine with you, uh, your dear ones. And uh, today we will talk about the Parson Vec fact. And uh, before going into the detail of the Parson Vec fact, uh, uh, I have a little bit discussion on the Giman effect, as we have already talked about the Giman effect in the classroom. So, uh, in the Giman effect, uh, we put the atom in a external magnetic field. But the intensity of that particular magnetic field is not uh, much as the Parson wave effect. So the basic difference between the Parson wave effect and Zeeman effect is here that we put the the common thing is that we put the magnetic field in both uh, effect. Uh, but in Zeeman effect, we put the uh, uh, magnetic field is not much more as we put the magnet as we apply the magnetic field in the Parson wave effect. So in the Zeeman effect, uh, we have a uh, we have a get a good transitions uh, between the sodium lines. I will talk to you later, and I will show you the transitions level of the sodium lines uh, when we are applying the uh, weak magnetic field. But in the Parson back effect, the magnetic field is strong as enough than the Zeeman effect. So. Uh, this is the particular theory behind the Zeeman effect, and uh, sorry, uh, this is a particular theory uh, between the uh, uh, related to the Parson wave effect. Now, when we consider uh, the uh, Parson effect back effect, the Parson back effect uh, uh, is the uh, splitting of the atomic energy levels in the presence of a strong magnetic field. There's a clear cut difference between the magnetic uh, field uh, which we are applying in the Zeeman effect and which we are applying in the Parson back effect. This occurs when the external magnetic field is sufficiently strong to disrupt the coupling between the orbital L and spin angular momentum. This is the very important, uh, you know, this is the point in the passion effect. Okay. Here, uh, the magnetic field which we are applying it disrupt the coupling between L and S. You know, the coupling between L and L, 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 L and S. Is the L is the very uh, you are aware about the orbital angular momentum and S is the spin angular momentum. While then Zeeman effect, the strong limit of the Zeeman effect uh, is the when S is equal to zero, when the coupling is completely break down, the two effects are equivalent. It means when L and S, L having some value, but S contains if X showing its uh, value is zero, then we just reverse back that effect into the Zeeman effect. In that particular sense. We can say the Zeeman effect and Parson wave effect are very similar when we consider the spin momentum is zero. This particular effect was discovered by the German physicist Friedrich Paschen and Ernest Back. So uh, the uh, efforts of the combined effects of those both great scientists. So we have named it as a Parson wave effect. But uh, in this uh, particular uh, Parson wave effect, we can you can see here. This is the particular diagram, and uh, where you can see the magnetic uh, field is along to the z direction. Here I have mentioned the weak external magnetic field because in the weak external magnetic field, when we have a consideration, when we calculate the total angular momentum, that is j is equal to l plus s. Here l is the orbital angular momentum, and s is the spin angular momentum. So coupling between these two vectors one is angular vector angular momentum vectors and second one is spin magnetic vectors spin angular momentum vectors so the coupling between these two vectors remain constant and so they make a total angular momentum in the weak external magnetic field the weak external magnetic field it means we are considering the zeeman effect we are simultaneously discussing the zeeman effect as well as the parson wave field because the they are very similar in some aspect only but only in the aspect of the strong in the magnetic field they are differ to each other in the Zeeman effect we are using the weak external magnetic field and in the Parson wave effect we are using the strong magnetic field so don't be confused between these two effects in the weak external effect we have already uh, you can see here j is equal to l plus s it means the coupling between l and s remains here but when we apply the strong magnetic field the coupling between L and S is disrupted. Okay, when it disrupted, then we can consider why it is disrupting because the things is spin orbit coupling is dominating over there. They can visualize as a combined to form a total angular momentum, 
J which then crosses over the magnetic pole. But in the in the strong case, S and L couple more strongly to the external magnetic field than to each other and can be visualized as independently processing over the external magnetic field. In the case of Zeeman effect, when we are applying the weak magnetic field, in that particular case, L and S combine uh, L and S vector combine and they make a vector J and J is processing around the B and B is the magnetic field which is along to the Z direction. But when in the case of a strong magnetic field, the disruption between L and S, they independently show their precision around the vector V. In that particular phenomenon, uh, when we are observing this uh, type of coupling and disrupting of coupling due to the magnetic field and in the presence of magnetic field, we, uh, we have a, uh, this type of transition we can uh, uh, see here. This is the weak magnetic field. In the weak magnetic field, I, I think uh, you have recapitulated your shell that uh, now this in the this weak, mag in weak magnetic field, we have a transition in the outer shell. This is the sodium lines. I can uh, you can uh, see here the sodium G1 effect is reproduced here to show the nature of magnetic interaction for the weak external magnetic field. In this case, when we, uh, we when we are not applying the field then the transitions are, then, then the splitting of the lines is not observed, only on a single line we are seeing in this diagram. But when the weak field is applying the transitions in both sides, one is G1 and second one is G2 lines. And the transitions uh, obey the selection rules as we aware about the selection rules, no need to discuss here. This is a, uh, this, uh, this transition and every splitting is obeying the uh, particular uh, selection rule. It may be sometime del L, or del s plus is equal to plus minus 1. So the transition on uh, the transition occurs here in that particular manner. This is the particular phenomenon. This is the particular transitions levels or energy levels of the transitions um, uh, transitions line of the atomic tran of the atomic particle transition uh, in the weak magnetic field. And it is a considerable fact for the sodium lines in the G-man effect. Now look at the other uh, figure when we are uh, putting the magnetic field uh, as uh, higher than the um, G1 effect, then we show the passion back here. In the particular passion back effect, when we have already uh, told you okay, that uh, uh, in the strong magnetic field, S and L couple more strongly to, uh, to the external magnetic field than to each other and can be visualized as independently processing about the external uh, field directions. So, uh, in that particular uh, 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 sense of context or uh, theory, uh, the sodium lines uh, just show their orientation in a different, uh, they are not showing their orientation, they are not showing as a, their transitions or much more transition, uh, much more in, um, uh, that transition in a much more intense uh, city as uh, uh, in the G-man effect, they show the intensity is very weak. Here you can see in, the, in this diagram, the particular uh, intensity and uh, between the graph between the intensity and the wavelength, we show here the middle line of the transition is more intense. This is the unique feature which we uh, can see in the partial wave effect. This particular unique feature, it means the more things or the more information we can getting from the uh, material when we are putting the atom, particular atom in a strong magnetic field. So this particular intensity, uh, intense line is missing here, you can see th this is a particular uh, intense line missing here in this weak magnetic field. Here you can see the uh, intensity of the outermost uh, transition lines is greater, but while you, you, you are seeing in the uh, middle, the, the intensity is not much more intense as the intensity is uh, greater in this particular um, uh, effect and that's not G man effect, uh, that's not passing back. So uh, students, uh, I think this is enough for today and we will have a more discussions on the Parson Vec effect and uh, Zeeman effect and the star effect next uh, I will talk and I will discuss about the star effect. It is a little bit, uh, you know, uh, this is a brief discussions uh, for uh, to enhance uh, and I would like to appeal your imagination to think about the how the transition occurs uh, with helping of the selection rules. Here you can see the transitions occurs with the help um, with, with the selection rule del s uh, del l is equal to plus minus one. So uh, 
I think uh, uh, it is enough uh, for, uh, to introduce the Passenweg effect in a brief in front of you. Thank you very much. See you later.